welcome my amazing viewers thank you so much for joining me on my program once again i appreciate you wherever you are connecting from if you have not subscribed to my channel please kindly subscribe to my channel click the notification bell so that you be notified each time i upload a video you will be among the first to receive it thank you so much and remember this whenever you look my video whenever you watch my video share the video to all platforms share it to family and friends share it in your whatsapp group so that people can get information on what is happening in the contraption called nigeria mainly against the beer france against the Duduas, against the indigenous people in the country called nigeria i try as much as possible to set the record straight i don't preach hate speech i don't speak against people i set the record straight the only important thing i do here is to make sure that the plight of the people remains on the front corner and the world will know the true story of what is going on in the country called nigeria remember they will always change the narrative. The government will always try as much as possible to use the conventional media to change the narrative. But that I will not allow. In this platform, we set the record straight and we say it the way it is. Not preaching hate speech, not by talking down to anybody, but setting the record straight and bringing the information to the front corner and letting the world know the exact situation of things. Each time you watch my video, you can equally go to the comment section. Put down your comments. Say it the way you feel it. It's so welcome. You can criticize if you so desire, but do it constructively so that we can be able to learn from one another. That is why I'm here. And now, I'm going to share with you a very important video. I hope after watching the video from the beginning to the end, you're going to enjoy the video. And you continue to stick around and be able to enjoy the rest of videos that are going to be coming your way from time to time. Thank you so much for coming. Today, the video I'm going to share with you is a very important video. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, President Joe Biden on Thursday marked the first anniversary of the January 6th Capitol insurrection by forcefully calling out former President Donald Trump for attempting to undo American democracy, saying such an insurrection must never happen again. For the first time in our history, the President had not just lost an election, he tried to prevent the peaceful transfer of power as a violent mob breached the Capitol. But they failed. They failed. And on this day of remembrance, we must make sure that such attack never, never happens again. In the United Kingdom, Conservative MP Alexander Stafford on Thursday took a stand against Lord Ahmed of Rotherham who was found guilty of sexually abusing two children in the 1970s. The MP started a petition calling for the Lord to be stripped of his title, insisting that his peerage was unacceptable and described it as an insult to his victims. Lord Ahmed resigned from the House of Lords in 2020. However, only an act of parliament with royal assent can strip him of his title. And a commemorative coin designed by artist John Bagdow showing Queen Elizabeth II on horseback has been unveiled, marking seven decades of the Queen ascending the throne. The equestrian image will be struck on the head side of the Royal Mint's 50 pence and a traditional five pounds crown, while the coins on the side will bear the number 70. It is the first collectible 50 pence piece to celebrate a royal event. Under sports, tennis superstar Novak Djokovic is awaiting his Australian Open fate in a Melbourne immigration hotel after authorities cancelled his visa. Djokovic's lawyers succeeded in a bid to stop him from being deported on Thursday with a full hearing in a federal circuit court now scheduled for Monday. According to authorities, the tennis champion failed to meet Australia's COVID vaccination exemption requirements. Finally, under entertainment, an unidentified juror who sat at the trial of Gaylene Maxwell on Thursday told reporters that he was sexually abused as a child and has retained a lawyer. Revelations by the juror in interviews published by two British newspapers threatened to upend the guilty verdicts returned against Maxwell, who was convicted on sex trafficking and conspiracy charges on December 29th. Well, let's begin what's trending. Nigerians have reacted to comments made by President Muhammadu Buhari during a live interview he granted the Nigerian Television Authority about his tenure in office. 
the president, who began this year by granting two media interviews within the first week, said that he has been involved in governance in various capacities in the country, including as governor and minister, and has given his best to Nigeria. The president also stated that he is not expecting any appreciation from Nigerians, but hopes that when his administration ends in 2023, Nigerians will recognize that he has served to the best of his abilities. Well, let's take some reactions. One user wrote, former President Obasanjo already told Nigerians that you don't have the capacity to do better than this. He insisted that this was your best. So yes, Nigerians have seen your best. Another user, Ikena, wrote, you have tried. You're a man of valor. Your integrity is impeccable. Mr. President, may that best you have given us return to you and your household in 10,000 fold. Dr. Abati, I'm coming to you on this story because I heard you earlier saying that, you know, Nigerians obviously don't show appreciation. Unfortunately, this comment um, President Buhari made on live television has generated a lot of negative backlash. I, I could swear to you, I could not find one positive tweet. Um, because, like you said, Nigerians, I don't know if it's that they don't show appreciation, but they see through the whole uh, administration that the president has not done enough for them. Okay. Um, one newspaper today was reporting, uh, President Buhari has having said that he has done his best yes. for Nigeria. He's been minister uh, at a point. Uh, he's been uh, head of state, military head of state. He's been the uh, civilian uh, uh, president. But he says, well, he has tried his best, but uh, he doesn't expect that Nigerians would uh, appreciate whatever he has done. And he said, well, whatever happens, he asked for it because he was the one that presented himself, you know, uh, for elective office a second time, which is a basic principle in law. Volentine non fit injuria. Don't go near the kitchen if you don't like uh, heat, if you don't like to suffer the effect of it. So he, he's very stoic about it. Whatever happens, fine. But he thinks that he has tried his best. Now, the second point to make is that, look, nobody goes into uh, a political office uh, to end up as uh, somebody who will be considered a charlatan. It is assumed, you know, that politicians, they like to be loved. Every politician, you know, would like to be remembered as having done something. And that's why politicians are victims of uh, a geography. You know, they like to be praised. They enjoy it. You know, some of them even indulge in uh, self-praise. Uh, or what uh, Norman Miller calls uh, advertisements for myself in a collection of, uh, of essays. So President Buhari, irrespective of what he has said, would like to be uh, praised, would like to be loved, uh, but he's just being modest about it. Uh, the third point, of course, is that, look, Nigerians, which is the point I made earlier, tend to be nostalgic. When you are in the office, everybody will come after you with their small daggers. You know, they will condemn you because Nigerians are suffering from, you know, uh, what I call the crisis of rising expectations. From one government to the other, the challenges are different. So the expectations also mount. And politicians create problems for themselves. And I think that this is one problem that the Buhari administration will have when it is uh, being revealed. You know, when you overpromise and you underdeliver, then that becomes a problem. And I think that, you know, there are people who may disagree with me. This administration overpromised and, in a sense, underdelivered. But Alajilai Mohammed does not think so. Uh, Femi Additional does not think so. Garuba Shewu does not think so. And that is why, about seven days ago, exactly seven days ago, you know, they gave a rollout of some of the achievements of the uh, administration. Uh, Alajilai Mohammed, the Minister of Information, was quite detailed uh, in providing information as to what the uh, administration has done with regard to Operation uh, Hadari Ndaji, you know, with regard to security, preventing an escalation of the security situation in the country. They've just uh, <coughs> uh, deployed uh, super Tucano jets, the Nigerian Air Force, with which, you know, uh, the Air Force is saying that they will further uh, decimate uh, the bandits who have not, the population of the bandits who have now been classified as terrorists. Well, on the question of the economy, the president says where well, it could have been worse. They continue to argue that uh, 
whatever problems we have with the economy is inherited. But they have forgotten. Now, that is precisely perhaps why Nigerians voted for them. And I keep saying, look, this never gives him a backward-looking attempt to blame the previous administration. It's not an issue. The uh, PDP government left in 2015 because the Nigerian people wanted something different. Now, they should focus on, on that something different that they have been able to do. Maybe people will remember that it was this president uh, under whose watch the uh, Petroleum Industry Act that had been there for more than two decades uh, was passed. Maybe people will also remember that it was under this administration, as the president was uh, promised, that the needle was moved with regard to the Electoral uh, Act Amendment uh, Bill. Okay? So that will be, you know, I don't want to do a Lai Mohammed and uh, Femi Additional's job for them. They have already documented it in the public domain. But maybe, perhaps, history will be fair, fairer, perhaps, uh, to President Muhammad Buhari as it has been now. But he's been very modest in saying he doesn't have any high expectations. But if we follow the pattern, we may find tomorrow uh, people, including revisionists, who will say that, okay, indeed, he tried his best. Maybe it wasn't good enough yeah. for Nigerians. Yeah, I, I thought he was quite honest by saying that he's done his best to Rabiola. I thought so, yeah. too. But what surprised me is that you said you couldn't find a single positive tweet. Yeah. I thought that politicians had all their attack dogs on social media. Well, we, we know those of all the, we know those. Of all the wretched <laughs> yeah. things you we can know be those in life tweets, so we don't to take be those, a politician's yeah. attack dog, <laughs> go hang yourself, no. frankly. We can, we can but, tell the yeah, difference. I thought you yeah. could find some of those. No. So you're saying that nothing was genuine. Yeah. Well, a lot of people do point to President Muhammadu Buhari's um, gains in the area of infrastructure especially rail. Like I've told you before, Rufai, mm -hmm. a lot of people were just mentioning passing conversation. I'm just about to hop on the train. And those conversations did not exist previously. So there is that. But a lot of those tweets that you're referring to are thinking of the economy, yes. thinking of inflation, how your buying power is vastly diminished, thinking of security, looking at the C agenda, actually, security, economics, anti-corruption. And that is just quite unimpressive as far as track records go. And there are some that do take the rather condescending view, I feel, that, oh, you can't tell what President Buhari is doing now, but in the future, you will look back and really recognize this momentous moment. And I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. As an as a adult population, we know when we're being served yes. as we expect or otherwise. But then you can now decide to now start to assign blame. President Muhammad Buhari's administration does have that threadbare, you know, handy excuse of 16 years of PDP misrule. Other people will talk about the, even the fall of Gaddafi affecting our security situation here in Nigeria, talking about climate change and the droughts in the Lake Chad Basin, creating that farmer herder um, crisis and so on and so forth. It depends on how charitable you want to be towards President Buhari. Yeah. Rufai, your analysis on this topic. Uh, so... One of the things I did in my life, I used to be an animal husbandry teacher mm. at uh, Elisha Grammar School. And when I set exams or tests, the students that pass, we say they did their best. And those that failed, we say they did their best, and the term is different. Mm. They say, sir, you gave me 20 of 100. So your best is relative. The question is, what is the result of your best? Mm. Nigerians have to start asking the results of the best people say they are giving. Because a lot of best we've been saying is not been good enough for mm, Nigerians. Right. And the truth has to be said. What are those parameters? I mean, you can't say you're giving your best when an economy that had like 10, 10 trillion in debt has budgeted to over four, close to 40 trillion in debt, when inflation rate is over 15%, when the currency that we all heard because they've disputed that now, that was campaigned for with one dollar to one naira, has now become one naira from 198 to over 413. When there are 33, when unemployment rate was less than 10% in 2015, and now it's close to 40% unemployment rates. So we need to ask and interrogate the result, the end result That's of the best. About, yes. Where more people have been thrown into poverty, close to 100 million people now in poverty. History will judge anybody either ways. But the question is, 
poverty will judge Nigerians one way. And it's been judging Nigerians in job losses, in pain and penury, in increasing crime. Right. So those are the things we should focus on. We can romanticize about legacies. Every leader loves to romanticize about legacies. But please, is it, time, is it not time to start romanticizing about the plight of an average Nigerian that voting government every four years to expect the best for them? Yes. The least for them, but they don't get it. Nigerians always get the short end of the stick, which is sad. Well, the president well, has the only about thing that the president left. can be sure of is that his place in Nigerian history, one way or the other, depending on who is doing the assessment, is assured. Oh, yes. Whenever you write Nigerian history, the name Muhammad Ubuari yes. will feature prominently in it. That in itself, as a form of legacy, is something that you can take home. Yes, well, reactions from this interview, hopefully, the 16 months he has left, he could do better, correct? Well, we'll take another story. Samuel Autumn, Governor of Benue State, on Thursday asked President Muhammadu Buhari to declare the Mayor Tiala Kato Breeders Association, otherwise known as MACBAN, a terrorist organization. The governor's call is coming after the federal government gazetted an order designating bandits as terrorists. Autumn stated that the security challenges in the nation will only be adequately addressed if a similar position is taken on the Meetiala Kalto Hore, Makban, and the Fulani Nationality Movement, otherwise known as Funam. The governor claims that these groups have vowed and have continued to cause mayhem in Bainway State and other parts of the country because of the anti grazing laws. Tundra Biola. Over to you on the story. So my question is, I believe that in Benue State, they have banned open grazing at this point. But I guess the state is unable to enforce that order, right? Because obviously, because of open grazing, these attacks are happening in the state. And that's why he's calling for the, um, you know, for these people to be outlawed at this point. So I don't know where we've gone wrong here, uh, Tundu. Well, I'm not quite sure how to answer your question, but my take on this is that breaking a law, breaching a law of a state does not necessarily make you a terrorist. Yeah. It makes you a criminal because you've broken the law and you should be tried accordingly. But the word terrorism has other connotations. Yes. But I guess for Senator Autumn, he's thinking of the kind of wholesale mass murder that Benway has witnessed. He's thinking of even the attempt on his life. He's thinking of just the amount of displacement, amount of complete horror that has been visited on Benway State as a result of what is termed as farmer herder clashes. That's not how I would put it, but that's how it's generally known. It's more one-sided than that. It's not a clash, it's an attack, mm. you know. So I understand and I sympathize with Governor Autumn here and he's thinking, well, if those bandits have been named terrorists, he might as well try and get in on the act. Well, people are being gazetted. He's putting mm. his own forward. I completely sympathize with him, but I think that's a bit of a stretch yeah. in terms of the definition. And you also have the other issue, which is the, the idea of collusion, which is the idea that certain people are protected. You know President Buhari is a patron of Mietiala. You know there are two Mietialas, but he's a patron of one of them. So there's the idea that some people are untouchable mm. in this country. Mm. So that's also what he's trying to bring to the fore. Mm. Dr. Vatin. Okay, very quickly. I mean, uh, the governor of uh, Benue State, uh, Samuel Otom, uh, through his uh, press secretary, issued a statement. In response to the statement, by President Buhari in his interview with Chinese TV, that bandits are now terrorists. Mm. And the president clearly was piggybacking on the ruling by the Court of Justice, Taiwo uh, Taiwo, in uh, November uh, 2021, uh, that the application brought by the Federal Director of Public Prosecution uh, to classify, it was an ex parte application at the time, to classify uh, bandits as terrorists. The court granted it. And then, of course, you recall that the AGF, Attorney General of the Federation, talked about this being gazetted, which was the express declaratory uh, order of court. And I think they've done that now, so the president referred to it. So, and everybody is happy with that. Yes. But Autumn is now saying, don't stop with uh, the bandits. That the real bandits are in Miyetiala and Miyetiala Kautal Hore. Well, I guess it's uh, playing oh. politics. Yeah. I don't know whether the president will... Uh, Accede uh, to that, you know, but it's good for, you know, people, politicians to engage in uh, showboating. Of course, the uh, Mietiala has also responded uh, to Samalotong 
Uh, their spokesperson says, no, the real uh, terrorist that should be dealt with is Samuel Oton himself. <laughs> but for us, as Nigerians, is that, look, terrorism uh, defeats the purpose of uh, stability of this uh, yeah. sovereign state uh, called Nigeria. It defeats the uh, uh, purpose of uh, national development. And the government should do a lot more in making sure that, you know, peace is secured and that the Terrorism Act, there is an act called terrorism, that persons are subjected to the rule of law on that particular, that particular law. And that uh, nobody, which was a pattern we have seen before now, should be serving jollof rice and pepper soup to bandits and who have now been properly identified as uh, terrorists. Uh, the NAF, as I pointed out, the Nigerian Air Force, has said shortly they will begin to deploy the Super Tucano uh, jets. Those, the Super Tucano jets, the Americans are saying, is governed by certain laws. Mm -hmm. The Foreign Assistance Act and also uh, the, uh, uh, the Foreign Arms Export Act of the United States. And what all of that means is that in deploying uh, all resources available, in checking these bandits, these terrorists, you know, there should be respect for the fundamental rights of individuals for, you know, and also uh, that the police, the rights of the police under the uh, International Convention uh, should also be respected. These are the issues. In, right. my in all of this, I would say again that my commiserations to the lives of those that have been lost yes. in Benway State. Yes. Because they are Nigerians too, and the only crime they have committed is being Nigerian. I don't care about all of this politicking back and forth, talk back and forth. We should be able to fix our insecurity problem without anybody who seems to be siding another person. That's a good point. Huh? Yeah. Because the subtext here is it's massive insecurity. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has been at war for over 10 years and nobody talks about that. We try to act like, oh, everything is okay. People are dying. Is it because people that are close to us have not died? Yeah. President Buhari, please, if you want a legacy, end insecurity in 17 months. Yes, that's a good point. Tundra, I was just going to say, has you, have you ever heard Dr. Abati talk about um, terrorism without mentioning jollof rice. Never. Have you? Okay, great. Not well, one. Well, well, all right. <laughs> Thank you guys for your beautiful analysis on today's show. Okay. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purpose. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. We must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you're notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remember us. Bye bye. See you again.